Welcome to the NXT Podcast, your home for weekly NXT reviews and insight. The beautiful part of NXT is that when one dream ends, another dream begins. Find all of your NXT news, recaps, and analysis right here. So with that being said, we only have one question for you. Are you ready? We thought so. Let's get the show started right now. All right, everyone. This is Memphis Mark coming to you from Mullet Manor. And we're going to do the review for NXT on 12.5 here. And, of course, they have a deadline coming up this Saturday. So they're having a couple of uh, men's and, and uh, women's uh, last chance uh, Iron Survivor match. And uh, they're going to start off this particular episode that way. But they do show a little clip of uh, them at the uh, training facility. And apparently, Kiana James and Roxanne got into it and had to be separated. So, And they're in this match. So, uh, of course, that's going to lead into it. And you got uh, uh, Roxanne going against uh, Thea Hale with her heavy metal entrance with J.C. Chain. You... Uh, uh, you got Valen Henry and uh, Kiana James, of course, and uh, so yeah, the, and and they even have at one point in time uh, Lyra, um, you know, the champ, watching from the back, and uh, I guess that's Tatum Paxley, maybe or whatever. They have the creepy girl behind her looking, <laughs> you know, kind of kind of interesting little uh, insight there, I guess you could say. But uh, man, I gotta say, this match was really really good the the ladies put on one heck of a uh, a show man they uh they all uh well put on a i mean they all put on like their a game i mean the match is good um a lot of times they do little like series of moves i don't particularly care for but they'll do uh like the roll-ups you know this person will roll up that person and then that person rolls up this person and they do all that but in this particular situation when they did it um uh, it actually looked pretty good you know i was surprised uh you know so uh yeah it's uh it's <laughs> the match was good so i'm gonna definitely say go back and check this out um i, I definitely would uh let me see they um uh, yeah the they get to fight roxanne and, and kiana do of course um they get to fight and they get on the outside and then Roxanne is the one that clears off the desk. And when she takes off the upper awning on the desk, uh, you, you know, it's twice the size of her. But uh, she moves it to the side, clears everything off. Uh, then you think Kiana is actually going to end up, um, you know, coming out good with this and, and gets ready to slam her. But no. Um, they fight through that and they end up on the wall back behind Booker T and Vic there and uh, uh, they uh, they do it and it looks really really good if you look at their facial expressions and everything I was really surprised it looked really good but uh, they fall both into the desk the desk of course explodes and then bam you have um, nothing but Thea and Valen left in the ring after that and uh thea goes makes a couple moves messes up uh valen gets a big uh oops kick upside the head like oops upside the head and uh bam it's gonna be valen henry um going in uh yeah going into the as the last participant in the iron survivor match okay after the match they're uh, doing a little promo spot with Lara and uh, the ladies champ and it's after uh, <laughs> before the uh, the promo spot they, uh, they they're doing some kind of TikTok challenge or something goofy I don't know what the crap uh, but anyway they bring out uh, uh, Lola Vice and Electra Lopez and uh, you know, she's explaining, of course, she has the equivalent of the briefcase you know, on the main roster where she can challenge for that belt at any time. 
So, uh, yeah, they're doing their little spot. And, you know, um, uh, Tatum Maxley comes out. And uh, she's really taken on a very odd persona. And, uh, you know, so we got the... the uh, the uh, Puerto Rican uh, uh, connection there, and uh, bam, uh, Tatum Paxley, and they're all talking about how they want a shot at the belt. Okay. And now we got Wesley coming out. Apparently he's got to have some kind of back surgery or something, so they give him the stick, and he comes out and does a real emotional, um, you know, promo uh, you know, has a couple of tears, talks about his surgery, and uh, he's got a crutch and the whole deal, and, uh, you know, does pretty good like that. I mean, you can't, you know, those, I'm not into those anymore, but as a younger person, I enjoyed those, so I guess if I was younger, I would have read like this, but, uh, of course, they've got to have it leading up to something, because it's, uh, what's the old saying, if you keep saying someone's name, they'll appear, <laughs> well, he, he keeps mentioning uh, Dom, um, uh, you know, how he'd like to do this and do that to him. Well, eventually, Dominic Mysterio appears. And uh, and he's looking at him like he wants to kill him. So they've got to have an angle here. You know, they got to have an angle because they're supposed to have a match. So, you know, the North American champion can come out here and kind of talk a little trash, uh, you know, and do a little of this and a little of that. Uh, but uh, then they have another little plot turn because you know they got Wesley in there holding his crutch like it's a he's gonna have to hit him with it or something like that and then all of a sudden Ray Mysterio appears so Pops appears and lets him know that hey you know since uh, Wesley can't compete pretty much it's gonna be Dragon Lee so I know they were coming with that anyway, so they're just going to push that angle up a little quicker. Uh, so yeah, and, and Ray is going to end up being in Dragon Lee's corner for this match at Deadline. So that actually should be pretty good, you know, should be pretty good. Of course, uh, uh, you're going to have to have, uh, you know, Dragon Lee come out. They're going to have to get into it, of course. So that's how that goes <laughs> on that part of the interview. Now you've got uh, Keanu James in the training room. Uh, uh, I can't think of the lady's name she was talking to, but uh, there again, she mentions Roxanne Perez's name, and then bam, there they go fighting uh, in the training room. Uh, and then they uh, they do a quick little spot um, with this breakout tournament that they've got coming up. Uh, and kind of give all the guys uh, that are participating in that um, get a chance to do a little, uh, you know, a little speak on some. You know, some get some mic time. The other ones just they show a picture. So, uh, and usually the ones that are getting the mic time are probably going to get the push before, but not always, not always. Uh, but then they're going to go from there. They're going to go to a, that Tatum Paxley and uh, Lola Vice uh, 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 with Electra. Uh, on the outside and uh, this is a good match uh, actually Tatum usually looks a little better than most of her opponents uh, but in this one uh, Lola just looked uh, her timing was good uh, she really like she sold when she needed to and then she turned it on man she was had some good kicks and great moves showed that martial arts background uh, was really good this match was good so uh, as I said in the in the show in general, I mean, I'm I'm sitting here going, well, let me get up it and and go do uh, X Y Z or whatever, and uh, I keep putting it off, <laughs> putting it off. I know I can hit pause, but I just keep putting it off. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Anyway, Lola's going to end up winning this match, uh, but it is a really really good match. So definitely go back and watch. I mean. Um, so, every, you know, we're, the show in general, like I said, is doing great. And then they do a little uh, promo with um, Nathan Frazier. He's back in the in the locker room, and Axiom comes in looking like Mr. Wrestling number two. And, uh, and of course, they have a little barb going between each other, and uh, pretty much it's leading up. Well, that was supposed to have been last week, so it's leading up to a match 
this week. So, and both of those guys are so fast and so good. You you can't help but have a good match uh, with those. So uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, they go from that. They go to a little promo uh, with Baron showing up out in the parking lot, uh, and uh, and it's all leading up uh, to uh, a a fight with uh, Alpha Academy and Metaphor. Uh, in a uh, six-person fight, mixed uh, mixed tag too, uh, but uh, <laughs> during that match, out of nowhere, right at the start of it, Joe Gacy pops up behind uh, Booker T and Vic and starts going, "Vic, I love you, man. I love you," uh, and just looking like, uh, "What was that?" Uh, 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 oh, uh, I can't think of the movie with David Spade with the. The big comedian, uh, but he kind of looked like Chris Farley. Yeah, uh, it kind of looked a little uh, that, but yeah, he shows up right at the start of the uh, Alpha Academy uh, going against Metaphor, uh, and you're gonna have. Let me see, who did I have in that? You had uh, Chad and Otis and Maxine uh, going against Mensa, Lash, and uh, Noam. And, of course, you know how this is going to go. Chad's going to school him for a while. Uh, and Noam, though. But Noam is really, really good. Um, I cannot put that, you know, off on him. I mean, Chad is definitely the best out of everyone that's in that ring. But Noam is really good. Uh, and they, they have a good little start uh, of the match and kind of go at it for a little bit. Uh, and the, the ladies, when they got in there, uh, you know, Lash and Maxine, the first time, you know, they, they look good. They had a couple good, you know, spots. Uh, but this one spot in this match, this almost, you could say, carried the whole show right here. Otis goes in and Lash picks him up. That's right. Not Chad Gable. <laughs> you know, not Mensa or one of her partners. No. She picks up Otis. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, and not only picks him up, but holds him, takes a step or so, and slams him. I mean, that alone uh, was just worth... Uh, you know, it's just it's just worth the whole thing. I, it's hard for me to explain it to you. This is another you must go back and watch. So, uh, but yeah, they end up. Uh, Maxine even does gets up on Chad's shoulders and does the dive off uh, to the crowd onto the floor and everything. So, a good match. Hey guys, good match. But uh, ends up uh, Chad catches a kick that Noam's throwing. Uh, drops down with that, uh, you know, that ankle lock, uh, and and Greg finds that leg, and then bam, that is uh, the end of it. Uh, so yeah, but I mean, it was pretty doggone good, you know. So uh, they do a, a little promo with uh, the Gallus, uh, the Gallus boys, uh, and old Hank and Tank, old Hank and Tank. Uh, but Hank and Tanker, they show up at the Gallus's pub. I guess you would say, and uh, challenge them to a match. And Gallus is like, no, man, y'all, there's plenty of other people, but uh, they make fun of them a little bit and uh, say, we don't want to get into a fight here in your pub, your nice little pub. So they agree. They buy them some beers, too. So Hank and Tonic do. Uh, they buy them some beers, and so... Yeah, good little spot there. Nothing spectacular, but good little spot. So you know we've got a match uh, coming up. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, uh, I don't know if did I mention that earlier that Ava... Uh, let me see here. Did I even write that down? But I, I know I did here, but... Uh, or is it the first time? Yeah, I believe it is the first time. Look, Ava, uh, for some... Yeah, it is the first time in this. Ava apparently has become a matchmaker because uh, she comes in uh, and they see her uh, where they catch her coming out of Shawn Michaels' office, aka yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, 
Yeah, she announces that there's going to be a steel cage match against uh, Roxanne and uh, Kiana James at deadline. So, uh, wow. Uh, pretty, pretty freaking good. So, that's a good start. Uh, now they're going to do... <laughs> You, you know how it's going to end. They're going to do uh, a, a interview with all of the ladies that are in the Iron Survivor match uh, this Saturday. And they put them all in a ring in chairs. You got, uh, let me see, Tiffany, uh, Lash Legend, Valen, uh, Henry, uh, Kiani, 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 there we go, Kiani, whatever. Uh, Miss Jordan <laughs> and Blair Davenport. So they all get in there and get their mic time. So everybody's on the stick. Everybody's talking about each other. And, of course, you know what's going to happen. Uh, they're going to get into a big fight. And uh, security gets out there. It's just uh, it's the start of things to come, I guess you could say. Because uh, <laughs> they go into a match. Um, uh, you know, they go, go to a commercial break or whatever it was. But they go into the actual match with uh, Axiom and um, Nathan Frazier. All right, so, you know, uh, they these guys are going to come out. And once they get going, I mean, they're fast as lightning. I mean, they're all over the place. I mean, fighting here, fighting there, fighting a little bit everywhere. But uh, right about the time, they're really getting it on. Um I don't know if any of you guys have seen Blazing Saddles. Um, it's a hilarious uh, movie, but not for everyone. Uh, but Blazing Saddles has an end uh, of a scene where the whole uh, TV or the movie crew is, fights out uh, to like Wilshire Boulevard there in, um, outside of Beverly Hills. And, um, and, and it's real funny. And well, that's kind of what they did here. The ladies start fighting and they fight all the way into Axiom, Axioms and uh, Nathan Frazier's match. So <laughs> it was real funny. The match, of course, is stopped. Uh, and then we even have a uh, a welcome back, a little welcome back Carter uh, kind of thing because uh, the ladies are fighting and then Blair Davenport is on the outside and uh, earlier in the uh, show, she had uh, when they had their interview time, she had talked about it. Uh, you know how many people she had taken out, and well, when she was outside letting everybody else fight, you know, laughing at them fighting and her not, uh, bam, they hit the music, and it's uh, Nikita Lyons is back, and she comes in and lays a little thump thump down upside Blair's head. So uh, we had a had a uh, an odd scene where the ladies fight into a match which was pretty good. Uh, then they continue fight. Then we had a, uh, a reintroduction or a, uh, you know, a welcome back to a wrestler that had an injury. Uh, everything you needed in this match is freaking just about everything you needed. All right, then uh, they do a little spot uh, with uh, Andre Chase and Chase University and uh, they're... Um, you know, they're talking about the scandal, you know, uh, how uh, Andre Chase is, uh, you know, he had gotten in gambling debt and then he took a loan out from a third party, Tony D. And uh, <laughs> so he's having a problem. Uh, t uh, and, and it was even asked at one point in time how much, and he was like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, but he's going to make it right. He's going to right the ship. He's going to, you know, do what he has to do to fix this problem. Uh, but everybody gets, because uh, this is kind of like him addressing uh, uh, Chase U University. That's the setting that they're going with this on here. So he goes through, uh, you know, uh, that he did it. You know, he comes out and pretty much said he did it and gets everybody a chance to voice their opinion so uh you know pretty good little spot i guess you could say uh but then they go from there uh you've got a little spot with mellow and trick they had shown a little piece of footage uh from a mysterious source uh you know anonymous source there 
and uh, it showed Mello and Trick talking uh, the night that Trick got jumped um, Mello or Trick leaves Mello uh, then texts someone was it Lexus Kane hmm. well Lexus Kane is pushing this angle because then they go to a little promo with Lexus King and they've been really doing some lining up on that on that guy's on his beard man he was all lined up and, and uh, shaded and the whole deal uh, <laughs> he cuts a promo about mellow for mellow to mellow so uh, yeah we know where this is uh, heading uh, but yeah you got uh, Lexus King and mellow and then you got trick and mellow so Man, they've got a whole nother line of uh, multiple angles and multiple ways they can take this. So, uh, yeah, I kind of like it. Kind of like it. All right, and uh, now they take us into the men's side of the last chance for the Iron Survivor match. Last chance to get in. So they've got, let me see, they've got uh, Mello, uh, and they got Tyler Bate, the big strong boy, uh, Joe Coffey, Gallus Broys, uh, and then Eddie Thorpe, uh, which he had his ribs taped up via um, Dijak. Uh, but yeah, so um, man, they, they this match is good too. This is a great match i mean everybody's timing's on um uh, you know it just it was good uh when there were multiple moves um you know i liked it uh so everything in here is good so i mean this is a show to go back and and watch it just is uh now in this particular match uh the best move i saw because you know when you have your ribs or, or whatever it may be taped up, uh, that is uh, an iron or a, a direct uh, signal to everyone to attack that area. And uh, so, of course, everyone does. Uh, and uh, at one point in time, uh, who was it? It was Joe Coffey. Uh, they're on the outside, and somebody has already broken the stairs apart. So there's the two sections. And uh, Joe Coffey does a Arn Anderson spine buster. Uh, probably the best guy I ever saw do it was Arn. Uh, but he does a spine buster to Eddie Thorpe on those steps. Looks fantastic. Sounds good. Uh, just led everything to the match. Uh, it was a really, really good match. Uh, and when you get everybody like that, you know, you're going to have a good one. But it ends up to where the big strong boy uh, gets a chance, puts a big, I think they call it the uh, uh, Tyler Driver 97 or something like that. Anyway, he gets it and gets the big win. Uh, but then uh, he gets on the stick, finally gets a chance, gets on the stick does a few seconds of talking and then you have Dijak. Uh, Dijak shows up, does his little spill, uh, and then of course you got Braun. Braun shows up, does his, uh, then you got uh, Briggs comes out, uh, does his. Yeah, yeah, you see how this is going a little repetitive, and then of course Trick comes out a whoop that tree uh a whoop <laughs> trick comes out uh and layeth the smack of down of on a dieth jacket <laughs> jack jack and they continue to fight all right so they go from there and then we have that matchmaker again you got mellow talking to ava about setting up a match against lexus king uh, then you got Trick that comes in and he's like, hey man, you know, uh, uh, the, well, they're working their angle and uh, they do their little, you know, spill there. Uh, and then Mello announces that what he had asked Ava to do was to set up a match with uh, Mello and um, uh, Lexus King at Deadline. Uh, so yeah, uh, and then they, they do this, uh, this was a little odd. Uh, they um, 
they get through with that, right? And then they go to a, like a commercial break, and then they come back, and uh, and uh, you've got Baron Corbin and Dragunov just sitting down at a table, <laughs> doing their their face to face confrontation. Uh, but yeah, uh, they they you know they're talking about their match at Deadline and everything, and they keep going back and forth, you know, talking. Um, you know, uh, you know uh, about that, and uh, uh, and it was pretty good. They went into it for a while, and they <laughs> they let them these two guys dragging off and uh, and Baron finish their uh, you know get through with the sticks. They get uh, they throw the sticks away because uh, 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 dragging off gives Baron a a big old hug, and he's like, yeah, you can own, the only person that can slay the dragon is the dragon, whatever, himself, or whatever, so, yeah, so they end with that, and Baron does a good play, you know, face uh, expression to where he's kind of, hmm, hmm, but then you have the other part of Blazing Saddles, because uh, then you have the men who come out fighting all the way uh, out and interfere with uh this spot so uh yeah uh not so bad not so bad i mean i i, I really like the show i like what they did i like the angles i like what they're building uh i like i like i like so uh yeah go back and watch this i give it a a, a b plus and a minus i mean it's a definitely good one to go back to but uh, anyway, you know, it's getting holiday times. I know everybody's out uh, trying to get their uh, gifts and, and, and doing decorations and, and doing all that stuff. And so we won't keep you too long. But that was pretty much the review there. And uh, man, with everything that's going on on the main rosters and, and what they've, they've really been doing and building up um, NXT very good i mean where are we going with ava is she going to be the next version of my version of an eddie marlin is she going to be the guy that uh, or the girl that runs out and, and makes the matches uh for everybody I mean, who knows we have another twist uh in this all so yeah uh so here we go but all right guys i guess let me see let me check everything here and i believe yeah I believe we are we're all done all right so that's going to do the review for nxt and i once again of course thank everyone for taking a few minutes out of their day to listen to this i appreciate it and definitely check out some of the other podcasts that we've got going some very talented people and very funny and very informative so thank you all uh and i'll end it just like i always do uh, if you can, get out and help some of them shelters. Do something if you can, if you have the ability to. And then, of course, spay and neuter. And, uh, yeah, well, there we go, guys. This is Memphis Mark, and uh, I'm out. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com and for all of these shows ad free head over to patreon.com slash wwe podcast until then we'll see you next time